Kampala, the Ugandan capital, and an election on full display. Even a candidate sailing along the street, entourage in tow. It looks like any other healthy election, but it's not. That's presidential hopeful Bobby Wine accusing the police of trying to kill him. He says his campaign car came under fire, and not for the first time. Yesterday, we survived death. The military, uh, after blocking us and after diverting us to uh, a remote road, they followed us and they shot at us. The musician turned politician has been arrested twice since the start of the campaign, the government accusing him of flouting COVID-19 rules on large gatherings. Wine's second arrest sparked widespread rioting, security forces accused of shooting at least 54 people dead. This is the man to beat, the old man in a hat, they call him. Yauri Museveni may look grandfatherly, but critics say he's managed 34 years in office by playing tough. Wine poses a new kind of threat. Young people having somebody who can rally them in the political direction or make this a risky election for President Yoweri Museveni. Wine supporters call him the ghetto president, a moniker he wears proudly. He grew up in the slums and wrote songs about it. I am not a son of a minister. I am not a professor. I am not any high class citizen. I am here to represent the common people, the ghetto people. Critics question his ability to transcend cult hero status. But he has bigger hills to climb first, a veil already being drawn across the election campaign. The outskirts of one of Uganda's best. We were expelled from the country last week, even with government issued media credentials. And local journalists covering wine can face both arrest and attack. Fear is there will be more blood on the streets in the days to come. Margaret Evans, CBC News, London. In Uganda, this is how opposition presidential candidate Bobby Wine's street campaigning often starts. And this is how it ends. In violence and clouds of tear gas. And that's why the pop star and politician, whose real name is Robert Chingulani, came to the Electoral Commission on Wednesday with a message. We have tasked them to take charge or resign. Wine has been on the road campaigning ahead of next month's election, in which he hopes to unseat Yaweri Museveni, one of Africa's longest ruling leaders. He accuses security forces of targeting his campaign, detaining, beating and killing his supporters. On Tuesday, Wine's friend and music producer, Daniel Oyerwat, known as Dan Magic, was reportedly hit in the face by a rubber bullet. Today they attacked us shot various people in the legs, and producer Dan Magic, who was right next to me, had his face shattered and teeth removed. The police said supporters of Wine's National Unity Platform Party had attacked security personnel and disrupted traffic. They said three people, including Oyawat, had been injured by tear gas fragments as police and the military dispersed the crowds. According to Wine, his head of security was also injured. We've asked them to prevail over the police and the military, to tell them to keep out of this election, especially the military. President Museveni said 54 people were killed last month as police and the military quelled riots that erupted after Wine was arrested for alleged violation of lockdown rules. Many in Uganda now fear the violence will only escalate ahead of the January 14 poll. You cannot kill all of It looks like a victory parade, but there's a way to go yet. Young Ugandans preemptively dub him the ghetto president. He's their man. Robert Chagulani, AKA Bobby Wine, 38 year old pop star turned politician and possibly, probably the most popular man in Uganda. But not everyone's happy about that. 
among them President Yoweri Museveni. Bobby Wine's latest release, a collaboration with Jamaican reggae artist Buju Banton, pulls no punches. If it takes a revolution, freedom will have to come. By the ballot or the bullet, let thy will be done. Breakfast in Kampala, Tuesday morning. Five-year-old Subi's dad's had a few scrapes of late. I'm going to pray for me. He's reassuring her about the day ahead. As his supporters anoint their chosen one before he hits the campaign trail, he croons in the Luganda language of bombs and tear gas and David and Goliath. So much for the reassurance. Just a few days ago, the regional police commander of Busoga region, where we are heading today, said to my face that he will shoot me in the head because he's a relative to Museveni. So if you have high-ranking police officers, officers of the law commanding entire districts, promising you death, and they've killed people before some of our supporters, and nothing has happened to them. What do you expect? So I expect the worst. The convoy heads east towards the lakeside city of Jinja and straight into Bobby Wine prophecy territory. For the pop star would-be president, performance is everything. But now he's swapped clouds of dry ice for tear gas, adoring fans' arms for armed riot police. His route repeatedly blocked, live rounds fired in the air, rubber bullets directly at people. Bobby Wine's music producer, Dan Magic, is hit in the face by a police baton round. It's knocked out several teeth. This time, Bobby Wine himself has escaped being silenced. The convoy moves on, crossing the Nile, next to Jinja. In a country of 45 million, where 80% are under 35 and two-thirds of them unemployed, they're pinning their hopes on their ghetto pop star to end the years of misrule and bring change. So it is a strong man leadership. It is a, a disconnection, a generational disconnection. Our rulers, who think they are leaders, they don't understand our challenges. Every day it becomes more evident to me that facing um, a 35-year entrenched military dictatorship is hell. The convoys reached the outskirts of Jinja. Then this. Live fire rings out as Bobby Wine's vehicle is diverted off to the right. Military now joining armed police. It's pretty clear that for them, the road stops here for Bobby Wine. His tires are shot out, a bullet hole in the windshield. He's twice been arrested. And this arrest, two weeks ago, triggered rioting in Kampala with scores of people shot dead by police. This campaign still has six weeks to run. Bobby Wine was just four when Yoweri Museveni marched in from his bush war, having helped unseat Idi Amin and then topple Milton Obote. Back then, he'd promised hope. Point number one on our program is the restoration of democracy. Now 76, Museveni wants a sixth term. At first, he brought peace after years of turmoil, growth after stagnation. But he has no time for detractors. Fifteen years back, a plucky British television presenter asked whether he hadn't just become a dictator himself. How can you be an elected dictator? Who elects you, who elects you then? I fought for democracy. We had no democracy here. But Museveni didn't come to power through the ballot box and appears to have no intention of leading that way. What I'm telling President Museveni is that, first of all, we respected him. You know, he used to say the same things that I'm saying when he was my age. What makes you think that you stood against a dictatorship when you were our age, but we cannot? So be true to your word. We are not going to give up. We are not, we are not your slaves. And we're not going to be slaves in our own land. So, President Museveni, I'm saying to you, give us liberty or death. 
Bobby Wine had called off his campaign after yesterday's chaos, but tonight he's announced he's back in the fray. He's urged the former guerrilla commander he's up against to bow out with dignity, adding, you don't want to go down like Gaddafi. Kampala, the Ugandan capital, and an election on full display. Even a candidate sailing along the street, entourage in tow. It looks like any other healthy election, but it's not. That's presidential hopeful Bobby Wine, accusing the police of trying to kill him. He says his campaign car came under fire, and not for the first time. Yesterday, we survived death. The military, uh, after blocking us, and after diverting us to uh, a remote road, they followed us and they shot at us. The musician turned politician has been arrested twice since the start of the campaign. The government accusing him of flouting COVID-19 rules on large gatherings. Wine's second arrest sparked widespread rioting. Security forces accused of shooting at least 54 people dead. This is the man to beat, the old man in a hat, they call him. Yauri Museveni may look grandfatherly, but critics say he's managed 34 years in office by playing tough. Wine poses a new kind of threat. Young people having somebody who can rally them in the political direction or make this a risky election for President Yoweri Museveni. Wine supporters call him the ghetto president, a moniker he wears proudly. He grew up in the slums and wrote songs about it. I am not a son of a minister. I am not a professor. I am not any high class citizen. I am here to represent the common people, the ghetto people. Critics question his ability to transcend cult hero status. But he has bigger hills to climb first, a veil already being drawn across the election campaign. The outskirts of one of Uganda's best... We were expelled from the country last week, even with government-issued media credentials. And local journalists covering wine can face both arrest and attack. Fear is there will be more blood on the streets in the days to come. Margaret Evans, CBC News, London. In Uganda, this is how opposition presidential candidate Bobby Wine's street campaigning often starts. And this is how it ends. In violence and clouds of tear gas. And that's why the pop star and politician, whose real name is Robert Chingulani, came to the Electoral Commission on Wednesday with a message. We have tasked them to take charge or resign. Wine has been on the road campaigning ahead of next month's election, in which he hopes to unseat Yaweri Museveni, one of Africa's longest ruling leaders. He accuses security forces of targeting his campaign, detaining, beating and killing his supporters. On Tuesday, Wine's friend and music producer, Daniel Oyerwat, known as Dan Magic, was reportedly hit in the face by a rubber bullet. Today they attacked us shot various people in the legs and producer Dan Magic who was right next to me had his face shattered and teeth removed. The police said supporters of Wine's National Unity Platform Party had attacked security personnel and disrupted traffic. They said three people, including Oyawat, had been injured by tear gas fragments as police and the military dispersed the crowds. According to Wine, his head of security was also injured. We've asked them to prevail over the police and the military, to tell them to keep out of this election, especially the military. President Museveni said 54 people were killed last month as police and the military quelled riots that erupted after Wine was arrested for alleged violation of lockdown rules. Many in Uganda now fear the violence will only escalate ahead of the January 14 poll. You cannot kill all of it looks like a victory parade, 
but there's a way to go yet. Young Ugandans preemptively dub him the ghetto president. He's their man. Robert Chagulani, aka Bobby Wine, 38-year-old pop star turned politician and possibly, probably, the most popular man in Uganda. But not everyone's happy about that. Among them, President Yoweri Museveni. Bobby Wine's latest release, a collaboration with Jamaican reggae artist Buju Banton, pulls no punches. If it takes a revolution, freedom will have to come. By the ballot or the bullet, let thy will be done. Breakfast in Kampala, Tuesday morning. Five-year-old Subi's dad's had a few scrapes of late. I'm going to pray for me. He's reassuring her about the day ahead. As his supporters anoint their chosen one before he hits the campaign trail, he croons in the Luganda language of bombs and tear gas and David and Goliath. So much for the reassurance. Just a few days ago, the regional police commander of Busoga region, where we are heading today, said to my face that he will shoot me in the head because he's a relative to Museven. So if you have high-ranking police officers, officers of the law commanding entire districts, promising you death, and they've killed people before some of our supporters, and nothing has happened to them. What do you expect? So I expect the worst. The convoy heads east towards the lakeside city of Jinja and straight into Bobby Wine prophecy territory. For the pop star would-be president, performance is everything. But now he's swapped clouds of dry ice for tear gas, adoring fans' arms for armed riot police. His route repeatedly blocked, live rounds fired in the air, rubber bullets directly at people. Bobby Wine's music producer, Dan Magic, is hit in the face by a police baton round. It's knocked out several teeth. This time, Bobby Wine himself has escaped being silenced. The convoy moves on, crossing the Nile, next to Jinja. In a country of 45 million, where 80% are under 35 and two-thirds of them unemployed, they're pinning their hopes on their ghetto pop star to end the years of misrule and bring change. So it is a strong man leadership. It is a, a disconnection, a generational disconnection. Our rulers, who think they are leaders, they don't understand our challenges. Every day it becomes more evident to me that facing um, a 35-year entrenched military dictatorship is hell. The convoys reached the outskirts of Jinja. Then this. Live fire rings out as Bobby Wine's vehicle is diverted off to the right. Military now joining armed police. It's pretty clear that for them, the road stops here for Bobby Wine. His tires are shot out, a bullet hole in the windshield. He's twice been arrested. And this arrest, two weeks ago, triggered rioting in Kampala, with scores of people shot dead by police. This campaign still has six weeks to run. Bobby Wine was just four when Yoweri Museveni marched in from his bush war having helped unseat Idi Amin and then topple Milton Obote. Back then, he'd promised hope. Point number one on our program is the restoration of democracy. Now 76, Museveni wants a sixth term. At first, he brought peace after years of turmoil, growth after stagnation. But he has no time for detractors. Fifteen years back, a plucky British television presenter asked whether he hadn't just become a dictator himself. How can you be an elected dictator? Who elects you, who elects you then? I fought for democracy. We had no democracy here. But Museveni didn't come to power through the ballot box and appears to have no intention of leading that way. What I'm telling President Museveni is that, first of all, we respected him. You know, he used to say the same things that I'm saying when he was my age. What makes you think 
that you stood against a dictatorship when you were our age, but we cannot. So be true to your word. We are not going to give up. We are not, we are not your slaves, and we are not going to be slaves in our own land. So President Museveni, I'm saying to you, give us liberty or death. Bobby Wine had called off his campaign after yesterday's chaos, but tonight he's announced he's back in the fray. He's urged the former guerrilla commander he's up against to bow out with dignity, adding, you don't want to go down like Gaddafi. Dear people around the globe, I'm addressing you as a Ugandan in the age of telling the world a story. The story is about Robert Chagulanyi, also known as Bobby Wine, known for his music but leading what they call the struggle for freedom. For the ones who don't know anything about Uganda, we are the youngest population in the whole world with over 80% of Ugandans below the age of 35. That's approximately the number of years our current president is in power but that's also Bobby Wine's age. We Ugandans all know Bobby Wine because of his music. The music that he starts producing in the late 90s from a small town center in the suburbs of Kampala. himself is a ghetto kid. Himself is, he, is, he represents ghetto. He is part of the ghetto. Ghetto is in his blood. That's why he's loved in our country. He challenged everyone that you know what? You can, be, you can come from the ghetto and be somebody because I'm also from the ghetto. I think this is a fundamental change in the politics of our country. This is President Yoweri Museveni in 1986. Ugandans were happy that the war against the regime of former President Obote was over and that Museveni brought stability and economic growth. Not five, not ten, but 30 years later, he won his sixth term. Now when we go back to Bobby Wan's ghetto, it might look peaceful to you. Kids playing around, happy faces, but the facts around Ugandan ghettos are worrying. People are really poor and they feel completely abandoned by Museveni's government. These people have been claiming they have brought, they had brought peace. People are sleeping well, nobody. But we can't sleep when we are starving. This part of Uganda where the war was, it had everything. People were good farmers, we had coffee factories, we had cotton factories, we had shambas, big shambas. They are nowhere to be seen. We had very strong cooperative societies, nowhere to be seen. Ugandans are slaves in their country now. That's why we are crying to the incumbent to put in, in place a situation where we can change politics freely.
In the late 90s, Uganda's music industry was changing direction, majorly because of them. Chameleon, Bebe Cool and Bobby Wine. Who is your favorite artist? I think all Ugandans have heard this question at least once. Musical beefs and competition was trending at the time, but Bobby Wine soon brought a new concept to life, the Bobby Wine edutainment. He gave advice through his music, sang about proper sanitation, entrepreneurship, the use of condoms, how to deal with the ghetto life, and he has always been outspoken about where he comes from, something that lots of Ugandans would be ashamed of. I'm, I'm Bobby Wine, there's nothing to hide about me. I come from Kamocha, and hey, I'm proud of it. You, and, and you know I'm, I'm representing that ghetto, and ghetto is all about, you know... You think ghetto so is about smoking? No, you're That's what wrong. we think. That's what you think, that's why I'm here, to make it clear. Ghetto is where I come from, yeah? Those places with limited opportunities in the ghetto where we come from is where most talent is, but it's deprived of all the opportunities. That's where I come from. That's you, Ganja, baby. Well, you tell you to look for a politician, we're comfy, but straight from the dangle, I come out and we come here, space exactly what's on a poor man's mind. Man called Bobby, one a man called Nobby, and listen, we come fit up. Remember, we are got to you. Watch this. Like we were telling the people, yo, we elected you, you into an office. You need to do something about the ghetto. You don't only remember us when you really need to get back into those positions. This music has always, has always been about uh, uh, justice. He preaches out love, he preaches out uh, unity, uh, he preaches out peace, and he teaches a lot of people through his works. All his works are educative. He wrote a song and I told him, man, this song is going to bring trouble for you. You want to do this song? You need to be somewhere. Maybe you need to be a politician. You need to be... Don't do this song. And he said, okay, I understand. Let me not do this song. And he didn't do the song. But after five years, <laughs> he did the same song. If I try to communicate what's actually on ground, I expect the authorities to appreciate that. I expect the authorities to react positively to that, not by intimidating the singer, not by uh, branding me uh, an inciter of violence. I expect understanding. People are pushing him to another position. You're singing for us the songs, these guys hear them, but they can't do nothing. Can you please get there on the floor and speak for us? So he's like, man, do you know that I can be a member of parliament? And I was, yeah, yes, you can. So Bobby Wine presented himself as a candidate in the by-election for Chardondo East. That's the constituency where he stays, to be the member of parliament, the representative of this constituency. If he is serious going to the parliament, let him first shave off all those beads. He agreed with people. Then we designed the other posters. It was put everywhere all over the country, even where the elections were not going to happen. You would go to Mbarara, find people with these posters, everywhere on their cars, on the streets, in their restaurants. Wow, 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 wow. Chandondo, those people showed us love, really love. <laughs> the 
we were trying to prove this that it's not about the dreads, it's about the brains. This is the song that Bobby Wine sang during the presidential elections of 2016. In this song, he advocates for peaceful elections and condemns the violence, a thing that always occurred during the elections. Yeah, of course, we are versing with the state. So all the state establishment were in place. Uh, that is the police, uh, the intelligence, the army, and uh, of course the NRM as a party. And these guys really try to, to do what they're best at, trying to rig. The police could say, let's continue. Okay, what happened? Okay, stop fighting. Let's continue voting. But somebody like is putting on like 300 votes and the voters are like 10. Security was to be guaranteed by us, not the police, because the police is ordered by the ruling government. They caught guys with, with vehicles, with boxes, so many votes already ticked. We had to drive our cars the whole day, checking every polling station. If I'm here, somebody's here. If I'm here, somebody's there. We were driving around. On the day of voting, there was so much tension. So many army people, like in uniform. And at around seven, when it was becoming dark, they removed power. And I knew these people were going to big elections. These guys can do anything. Even if you win in numbers, they can decide to announce some other person. So there was so much tension. These results are from all the 93 polling stations. I declare Chagulanyi Center Murobat, who has obtained the largest number of votes, to be the elected candidate for Chadondo County East Constituency, Wakiso District. This is not my victory, this is the people's victory. It is the exaltation of the voice of the common people. Now the divisions of elections are over and it is time for us to work together to bring the positive change that our people so badly need. I've been participating in elections throughout my life, but I've never seen an election where people jubilated as Robert's election. And in our history here, it hasn't ever been here for somebody to win an election 98%. We need all. The, we want all. Even the the structures of the NRM, that is the National Resistance Movement, the party in power, voted for Bobby Wine. There are people who are saying that a lot of musicians and comedians are getting into a parliament, and so it is sort of diluting the quality of the parliament. How different are you going to be? What message do you have for such people? Um, there is something called stereotype. Yeah. Um. For long, there's been that stereotype, but probably that's why God raises people like me to prove certain negative perceptions wrong. People used not to take him serious, but when he got into active politics, yeah, they're saying, hey, really, he had some sense. Yeah, they, now they started looking even for the songs that he'd sung before. And... Like Bob Marley said, we handle things in a rubber dub style. Yeah. I, Shabulani Saint Amal Robert, swear in the name of the Almighty God that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to the Republic of Uganda and that I will preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution. So, amen. Yeah.
to them as you do make a first step to parliament my last word to them is that you can count on me i've walked into parliament i've always said it before that if parliament cannot come to the ghetto the ghetto will come to the parliament so i want you to know ghetto has come to the parliament of uganda but what we want to deliver what we want to change we're going to change it together my role is to give people confidence and to make them believe in democracy which they believed in the whole country had been watching these elections it felt bigger than a general election. While this was just a by-election for Chadondo East, one of the 146 constituencies. But there was also a big doubt in the back of people's mind. Is he going to deliver? Is he capable? Is it not just for the fame? It had mixed feelings. You know, politics. And I was trying to show him that there's a way things have been going on in Uganda. And when you look, you wouldn't wish it on your friend. People are captured, beaten up, all sorts of things. And that's what we're heading to. Bobby Wine was not even a week old serving in parliament when a huge challenge came to his path. They wanted to remove the presidential age limit of 75 from the constitution. And if this bill passes, President Museveni can again rule for another term in 2021. When he heard all that, he asked himself, should I sing a song? He got an idea and decided to go to the studio, and he recorded a voice message. Voice note. My name is Chagulanyi Sentamu, also known as Bobby Wine. This 12th day of September 2017 is a very sad day in the leadership of our country. They passed a resolution to remove presidential age limits from the constitution of Uganda so that President Museveni can become life president. They did this at a time when our nation has been bleeding for the last 31 years. Our country's former glory is all gone. Corruption rates are alarming, service delivery is at its worst, and women are dying while giving birth. Your elected members of parliament think the best response to this crisis is to remove age limits. Well, my message to them is this. You are traitors. You have betrayed your country. You have sold your conscience for cheap. History will judge you very harshly. The last shots that we could see from Bobby Wine, he was in custody at the police station. But we all knew that he had an interview on NBS, Uganda's biggest news channel. So we were waiting to see if it would continue. So they were like asking him about the recording. He said, yes, I said it, A, B, C, D. Did I break an arrow? So they had to, had to sign for him. We left the police, we had to drive up to NBS. Then we reached NBS, Bobby entered the studio direct. Then the police had to wait for us. Robert Chagulani, good evening, Robert. I was charged for inciting violence um, as per the audio and video that I recorded. So I was sending a message to the people to tell them that it's actually their constitutional right as per Article 3, Subsection 4 of the Constitution that every Ugandan has a right and actually has a duty to protect the Constitution. And even right now on TV, I'm calling upon all Ugandans not to sit down, rise up and defend the Constitution before the Constitution is too weak to defend us. 
Canada. There were plans to arrest all of us opposed the MPs. So we had a plan not to sleep at our places to fail their plan to arrest us. Uh, I have to be in Parliament together with my fellow MPs to stop this bill from even being presented. And now I'm heading to Parliament. And once I enter Parliament, still I have the immunity. They can't touch me. Yeah. So let's move. By the time we got into the main road, everyone around could tell it was war. The road was blocked, traffic on the other side. That's when Bobby Wine got out of the car. When he got out, he just jumped onto a motor taxi. Davey came running after him while Bobby was on a motor taxi. Go, go, go. I told Bobby that police were following. The driver replied that police can't catch up. Heading to Parliament, we took shortcuts. Uh, for us, we are watching on TV because Parliament was under siege. It was surrounded by all military forces. There's nothing to clarify. Get out of the house. Nothing wrong procedure. Get out of the house. We'll issue in 30 minutes and you must be out of this house. The speaker was not following the rules of procedure. And later on, we, we knew that she was given almost 6 billion shillings. She allowed the intruders to access parliament. Uh, she allowed uh, uh, forceful eviction of MPs. So, that situation, we told Bob Wine, I personally I told him that, you see, if the situation goes astray, you do whatever you can do to save the constitution, to save the country. You'll be counted in the history of Uganda. personnel entered parliament just to threaten them and they fought with these people. It was a war. We saw guys with black suits. Yeah. We informed their soldiers. when some members of parliament were out. Now this was planned. Bobby Wine was taken to Nagalama police station while a big part of the world was receiving this news. After this fight, the whole country was suddenly interested in national politics. Something was going on. Bobby was at university and I was the best in our school, so I was brought to Kampala to feature in a, a drama. So he was also brought from MDD, Makere University, and so we got to meet on stage. Okay, he was distinct, he was different. He had red 
he walked differently he was full of himself he rarely talked to us he came late left early but was very 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 good on stage so one day bobby pushes me to home then you'd have to have some muscle to fight for a seat so he would fight for my seat then this day he fought for my seat then they, the conductor said you can't get out of this taxi you're already seated he said okay come and sit here so he brought me all the way home so when he came this boy Devi said what buddy do you know who you're with and I'm like what do you mean to this is Bobby Wayne and I'm like what do you mean he says he is Bobby Wayne the one that sings this song called Kagoma and I'm like what the hell is that? Uh, of course, it felt like there was betrayal on my side. I needed to have known this from the start. Okay, it took me some time. My auntie just said, you know what is disturbing you? What is disturbing you is that you're so religious. You are just this church girl who does not know the town. He is not a thief. He is not a... A gambler, he is working hard and earning money through his talent. But then, I don't know where it ended, and then we were back together. We read in the newspapers that three explosives were thrown at their home, the place where Bobby, Bobby Wine, and their four children stay. It was directly related to the fact that Bobby Wine was trying to stop the edge limit bill from being passed. We cannot allow a dictatorship because if this passes, then we are doomed. He started a campaign with other opposition members to stop this bill. The campaign color was red, so everybody was wearing red. Even members of the ruling party were joining the campaign. They named the campaign Tojikwata Ko, meaning don't touch the constitution. When Tojikwata Ko started, several things occurred. I was here one night, and Robert called me that they had dropped grenades at his house. And that very morning, I drove to his place. As I was there, several members of parliament came to console him. I welcomed them. Down there in the ghetto, people are beginning to get this ray of hope. They, they believe things can change, and indeed things can change. So we, we just can't give up, especially when we know that what we're doing is right. If you come for my children, then you come for everything I have. So it was a big scare. Some of them are crying, you write it to be back, or why don't you leave these people alone? But when you look, at the promise we gave people, when you look at the conviction we have in our hearts, you realize that, you know, we either win this struggle or we die trying. He drove back to his studio without telling anybody, and the next morning he took me to the studio to listen to his new project with Dan Magic. I heard the song Freedom. Uh, they shot the video so fast because we were scared that it would be stopped. Uh, we released it the moment we were on the plane. <laughs> they would have arrested him. We even named it the Freedom Tour because we released the song and by the time we got to South Africa, everyone knew the song. The song spread like a wildfire. Yeah, even if it did not get played so much on TV. And for the few TVs it played on, they were warned not to play it. It's not the first time they ban him. They don't play his music on TV, but people have it on their phones, people have it on their radios, people have it on their computers. Yo, back home, the burning Bobby Wine song, titled Freedom. Yeah, man, freedom comes to those who fight, not to those who cry. 
because the okay. more you cry is the more your people continue to die. So speak to the dictator straight in the face and tell him we want to be free. Free. We came back to Uganda and continued with concerts. Everyone thought that they would arrest him at the airport. There would be so much attention. That was his protection. He always has tours in Uganda, the central tour, the eastern tour, the western tour. His next rallies has been his concerts because they, they attract huge amounts of people. And he has been pushing in his message. It could boost him. That's why they tried to stop him. And Bobby, when he sang the freestyle, it came worse, so they had to stop Mukono. There are many different shows that we are stopped. Because they thought and they knew that when people get to realize the truth, it will be a tug of war. <laughs> So they start stopping his concerts. But you told them, I'm a musician by profession, you cannot stop me from singing. We are going to court. I was uh, subsequently charged with inciting violence. But in my own interpretation, um, they are charging me for opening the eyes of the people, especially the youth. They are charging me for showing people that they have been enslaved for so long. They gave us some rules. You shouldn't talk about Ojikwatako, you shouldn't talk about politics. No, go, sing, get off the stage. That's, that's not the Bobby Wine people came to watch. Hey, I would like to communicate about the things that we have to eliminate. The ignorance and poverty to eradicate. All these ghetto youths, they to educate. And to see that the president is true. Disrespect of the constitution is too bad. We are fighting for freedom. We are living in a time similar to the one of slave trade. This operation is worse than appetite. The gun is the master, citizen slave. The ball of Africa is bleeding. Question, what was the purpose of the liberation when we can't have a peaceful transition? What is the purpose of the constitution when the government disrespect the constitution? Where is my freedom of expression when you charge me because of my expression? What you're doing to this nation? What are you teaching the future generation? See our leaders become misleaders and see our mentors become tormentors. Freedom fighters become dictators. They look at the youth and say we are distractors. We are fighting for freedom. Yes, man, like Martin Luther said, in the end, we remember not the words of our enemies, but the silence of our friends. decided to carry out public rallies, uh, constituents per constituents, to carry out consultation. If you are having uh, a, a political rally, you just do it. Because even if you, you seek for, for, for permission from the police, they cannot do what? They cannot allow you.
They don't want us to talk to, 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 lead, to lead the public in all of this. A lot of people, people could have known this a long time ago, but whenever you say we are having a rally, we are going to talk about national issues, they bring in tear gas. If you make a you, you make a rally there without Bobby Wine, you can't get uh, good results. Then we face the tear gas, live blades. We went down like this. People were so dangerous and ready to do everything in Toju Kwataku. The whole country was watching to see the last seat in parliament about the presidential edge limit. Is this edge limit bill going to pass? We were very curious to hear the last words of our MPs, our representatives, before the last decision was going to be made. Honorable Speaker and members, I have the real opportunity to traverse the whole country. And everyone came from north to south, from the east to the west, people are saying, Yeah. If you can watch inside the lens, it would be great. Okay. Yeah. yeah um, to the government, um, the president, of course, and the entire executive, I want you to know that this is not a war. We don't hate you. We say this because we love our country and we love our generation and we want to be in a better Uganda. You promised us lots of things, but we have been disappointed constantly. All we are looking for is the opportunity to do things ourselves in our home. When you were our age, you did not accept these kinds of injustices. There's no reason why you should expect us to accept that in our age. That's all we want to do that um, constitutionally and peacefully and for the betterment of our country. Yeah, 
to all of you Ugandans, it's important for you to know that this is your country, this is where you are born, and this is where you are going to be buried. Um, it's important not to expect everything from the politicians or from the government. So get involved, don't leave matters to the um, politicians alone, no, get involved. And most importantly, do not fear, because fear is the only barrier between us and the country we want to live in. One day we shall be reminding ourselves of this struggle and that is when we are on the other side of freedom. So hanging right there, we're also hanging in right there, we'll get the liberation that we deserve. From this moment on, one challenge after the other was coming his way. He demonstrated against new laws that were brought in by Museveni. He started the People Power Movement, brought opposition leaders together, and he went to support opposition candidates in other parts of Uganda in order to create a more equally balanced parliament. But the more he started mobilizing Ugandans, the more his life was made difficult by the government. And the more his popularity amongst Ugandans was growing, the more he was getting into the danger zone until the 13th of August. Bobby Wan was supporting an opposition candidate in the northern part of Uganda while things got out of control. Bobby Wan was captured, tortured, and brought to the military prison. His driver was shot dead in the driver's seat of his car, where he was seated one minute earlier. Bobby Wan was facing death and needed medical help from abroad. Why is my husband held in a military barracks? This is the moment that the world was taking it to the streets with the hashtag Free Bobby Wine. And me? I was demonstrating in Amsterdam. And it really doesn't matter who I am. But I am one of the many Ugandans who has been following the story and that still follows it. Because this is a very important part of the story of Uganda. The story from ghetto to parliament.